and welcome to the learning circuit. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your own circuit blocks. Circuit blocks are a great tool for elementary school and even pre-K age children to learn the basics of circuits. We're going to create three basic types of blocks, a power source, interrupts, and a load. For your power source, it's best to use three volts. I recommend a two AA battery pack because most people have AA batteries around their house. Now these come in varying styles. You can get them just plain. Some of them have switches, some of them have covers. You can also get a button cell battery holder, but these are less common around the house, so I like to stick with the double A's. The next set of blocks we're gonna look at are the load. A load is anything that uses power. So here are some examples. We've got a buzzer, a motor, an LED, and a fan. You could also use incandescent lights from a strand of holiday lights, or you could buy a socket that takes a bulb. When selecting your load components, it's best to choose components that are rated for three volts. That way it works with one battery pack. Some of these components can work with more than three volts, like the fan and the motor, but they still work with only three volts, so that's really best for this. If you end up trying to use more than three volts, you can actually damage some of your components, like this LED. If it's given more than three volts, it can burn out and it'll stop working. The third type of block we're going to make uses interrupting components, like switches and buttons that interrupt the power to the load. Here are some examples of those components. There are switches, buttons, and sensors that use light, pressure, and sometimes flexibility, as well as other things to determine how much power is let through. Let's make some blocks. After you gather your components, you're gonna need some wood. I just used two by fours that I found in my scrap bin in the wood shop, or you can go to your hardware store and buy some new. Take your two by four and cut it down into sizes that fit your components. I sanded my blocks to reduce the risk of splinters. Next, you're gonna wanna place your components on your blocks to see how they're gonna fit. Some components come with leads that you could solder to, some with wires, and some with not much of anything at all. For components that just have posts and not really any wires or leads coming off of them, you're gonna wanna add wire. I recommend using stranded wire because it's a little bit easier to solder with and it's more flexible. For the components that don't have wires, you wanna start with a piece of stranded wire and a rivet. You want to wrap the wire around the post of the rivet so that the wire is flush against the flat part of the rivet. To make this easier for myself, I made a jig to hold the rivet while soldering. For components that have no wires, you can solder the rivet wire directly to the component. For some components, it's easiest to glue the component to the block first, like this battery pack. When gluing your components to your blocks, you want to make sure that you're not blocking any moving parts or switches. Another method for connecting your components to your rivets is by just soldering the wires together. There it goes. When soldering two wires together, when you're done, you're going to want to cover the joint with either heat shrink or electrical tape. If you're going to use heat shrink, make sure you put it on the wire before you solder them together. I'm gonna use the Ben Hack trick on my heat shrink, and instead of using a heat gun, I'm using a lighter. Make sure not to melt it. Pew, pew, pew. Oh yeah, shrunk. For the LED, I decided it was easiest to solder directly to the rivet. Use your needle nose if you need some assistance. Okay, I'm gonna stick it in my jig. Try to bend my LED out of the way so I can keep that wire down at the bottom. For some components, hot gluing the component to the block is easiest. For others, you can screw them on and for others still, you might actually want to leave more of it exposed, so you gotta do something a little bit special. If I put it on its side, if I attach something to the shaft at any point, the block would get in the way of it spinning. If I place it with the shaft facing the sky, then I can attach anything I want to it later on. So what I'm gonna do is cut a hole in the block to hold the motor. To do that, I'm going to use a drill bit and a spade bit. Not only do I have to cut a hole for the motor, but I need to cut extra holes to make sure that the wires have enough room to get out. Once you have your component in your block, 
figure out where you want your rivets to go. You can even push down on them a little bit to mark where you want them to go, and then you'll drill your holes. You want to use a drill bit that's as big or slightly bigger than the base of your rivet. Once you've got your holes drilled, you can hot glue in your rivets. Before I glue in my motor, I'm gonna check to make sure that everything still works. Does it work still? Woo! Ha! It works! So let's glue it into place. Hot glue! Depending on the age of the children that are going to be using these, you might be able to just use alligator clip leads. The problem is, with really small children, they don't really have the finger strength or dexterity to be able to grip and pinch open these little alligator clips and they can get really frustrated. Instead of using alligator clip leads, you can make your own wires with ring connectors on the ends. To make these, you just strip the end of the wire and crimp on the ring connector. It's that easy. Make sure that the ring connectors you use match the size of your rivets. They can potentially be too small or too big. If they're too small, they just won't go on there at all and then they'll just fall off. If they're too big, then they'll flop around and not make a solid connection. All that's left to do is make some circuits. If you have problems with your circuits, consider that some components only let power through in one direction. So if you want, you could label which side is negative and which side is positive. Another common problem is the connectors aren't perfectly made, so you want to make sure that the ends of the wire are making contact with your ring connector. Here's an example of a circuit. I have my battery running through my switch to my motor. So when I turn my switch on, there goes my motor. Let's try it with a light. So all I have to do is unplug these swap them out, put my light in place, there we go, hook up my light, and oh yeah! If you have any comments or questions about the circuit blocks, remember to post those on the Element 14 community. Thank you for watching The Learning Circuit.